Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. How are you? My name is Tiffany. I do anything fiber related on this channel, whether that be knitting, hauls, reviews, podcasts, everything of that sort. And today we are going to be doing another yarn around the world. So this time we are doing kind of France or more just the places that I went to. So Paris and Lyon. And I'm just going to talk to you guys about all the yarn stores that I was able to get to and kind of uh, what they had and how I liked them, kind of rate them and all that fun fun little stuff. If you ever end up going to Paris or Lyon, definitely go check these guys out and let me know if there are any other ones that you know of that I missed because there are probably so many and maybe maybe we'll go again in the future. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I'm just going to put in some clippets of my of my trip to Paris if you guys want to see. Just I think it's nice. I think I've seen Inga from Knitting Traditions. She'll put in the end kind of like clips of uh, her adventures around Norway so this is just me doing that with me doing that with Paris I guess I also just want to preface um, I hope everyone is staying safe if you are in Paris um, I know that the protests are happening so um, everyone please be safe I just want to thank book of the month for sponsoring this video book of the month is a monthly subscription where they send you two books their mission is to help readers discover new books that they'll love to promote work from emerging authors it's really fun if you're looking for something to spice up your reading you guys know that I've been trying to get into reading more I just want to show you guys the books that I chose for this month of July the first one is called the first ladies it's by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. They wrote the personal library so if you guys have seen that book I feel like I've seen it everywhere but this is just another collaboration that they did. It follows like the true story of the first lady uh, Eleanor Roosevelt and the relationship that she had with the civil rights activist Marie McLeod Bethune. I think it's just a really interesting way to learn a little bit more about history but also uh, be able to read it in a really engaging way so I'm really excited to read it. I love that book of the month has like their own special covers so if you can see the book of the month is like literally everywhere it even says july 2023 uh, even the book inside specific hardcover it just feels really nice and special to have and the second book that i got is called the Connollys of county down it's written by tracy lang so the author tracy actually wrote another really famous book called the brennans i thought it was just really cool that book of the month is featuring their books and you're able to get them at a really affordable price so this is just about this girl named tara Connolly who is released from prison <laughs> and she's trying to rebuild her life but she has a lot of family issues with her brother and her father and dealing with all that comes with it. I have a coupon code for you guys if you use the code fireworks you can get your first book for $9.99. Definitely go check it out and thank you again to book of the month. To coincide with the Parisian vibe I'm wearing my Friday tee by Petite Knit. I just thought it was perfect because it's super beautiful and striped and looks not gonna lie stunning on me. I love that it's like long enough. I like that it's like folded in a little. Um, it's like a little long to kind of just wear like this so I like to tuck it in and it's cute and I love it and I look so I don't know Persian vibe. <laughs> This is the only way I can describe it. Broken Rib is honestly just so stunning. I love how thick and chunky the um I guess the raglan is. Uh, I knitted it with Sunday from Sunnis Garn just in the color almond and black and she's classy. I was a little afraid it might have been like too much stripe like the black was gonna be a little overbearing but I think because my hair is black it's it's fine. Okay so the first one I went to was called Une Maille à l'endroit. Dude I'm so sorry. I don't know what that means. I'll put it in the description below but I think there's two locations I only ended up going to one but it's like this really cute and dainty place it's kind of hard to like gain the confidence to go in I mean I feel that way with every yarn store honestly just because unless there's a lot of people you kind of feel singled out once you enter the store so we were struggling right off the bat because uh, she she like literally as I was crossing the street to enter we just see this woman lock the door and then leave <laughs> thankfully there was like a sign that was like I'll be right back and we had to stand there awkwardly and hope that she was gonna uh, come back soon and she did went in it's really cute I love how everything is stacked I don't know how it is again not a lot of calyxes but lots of like really nice long like ceiling to floor bookcases full of yarn I loved how they were stacked a uh, ton of lang I'm gonna say that always and forever 
but it's really nice and I have never been able to find the Lang cloud before and she just had an abundance of it. Um, and in Friends, I was also seeing like a bunch of Fonty. I've never used it before. Like I think I put it out on my Instagram a story to ask people if they've used it before. Um, I was I was really tempted, but the fact that I hadn't heard anything about it, I was kind of on the fence about buying anything. But I feel like if you're in the Paris area, like it's definitely one to try out. Again, lots of BC Garn. I have been weirdly obsessed with BC Garn or yarn. Yeah, it's like really close to the Pantheon or kind of like the Notre Dame, that area. So it was pretty easy to get to and it's really close to the sightseeing areas. The next one I went to was called The Little Weasel. I think this one was honestly a definitely must go. Like if you're going to the Louvre or anywhere around that area, it is like a little bit of a trek, but pretty close, really close, like honestly did not even have to take a transit there like it's that close, do you know what I mean? Because you can't even get anything like that in Vancouver, like you have to drive to every single yarn store because they're just so uh, randomly placed, but to be able to walk to the, like all these places from a really big sightseeing area is like honestly really um, cool. So the little weasel is in this beautiful little alleyway of shops. I don't even know how to explain it. I don't know. I've never seen ones that's like that's so cute and quaint. But yeah, little weasel is kind of broken up into two stores. It's like hella confusing. But like one is on one side of the hall and one is on the other, so they're like opposite from each other. Um, and so one has kind of more branded yarns, big brands, uh, whereas the other one has more uh, hand dyed yarn. Um, I of course went to both of them because how could I not? It's like honestly feeling like you're going to shop at two different stores. So the first one, which had all the branded yarns, it was all coated by color. I both liked and disliked that feature because obviously like it's hard to find all the yarns that you want unless you know what brands are what brands. Like it's not separated by brands. I don't know why that's like one thing I love is separating things by brands, but it's separating by color. I guess I understand also separating by weight of yarn, but I think that just doesn't make a lot of sense. It was a little hard to navigate. I was literally like going, like walking back and forth, back and forth um, to look at all the different colors and like see if I like, maybe if I was in the grays and I saw like Filicolana, like Highland Peruvian wool or something, I'd like have to go to the other color, say I was looking for red and check to see if they had that same yarn in that color. And like sometimes they didn't. So it was kind of like, I was like, oh, and then disappointed and then have to go to another section to look for a different yarn. Relatively a really cute shop. I think their selection is really nice. Again, lots of Lang, lots of Filicolana. That one was probably the one that got me. Like if you are not in the Europe area very often, like seeing how much Filicolana and how much different Filicolana they had, like Alva, like Merci, which I don't normally see very often in the flesh. Oh, they had a ton of Arweta and Jawel. I think if you're looking for some socks or something small that you can bring on your trip along the way, I think is a perfect place to get it. The ladies were super nice. This was straight out from the UK. So having to speak um, <laughs> me struggling, not even trying to speak French. Everyone was super nice and was able to speak English with me and I really appreciated that. I wish I could have tried to speak in French, but it was honestly like it was, I was butchering that language. They even had little kits that my friend wanted to get, but um, didn't end up getting that. They had like little crochet kits. You could honestly just bring a friend who like doesn't knit and I don't think that they would be bothered at all. There's a lot of little things that could interest them to get started. Onto the next section, the next section was a lot of hand dyed yarns, a lot that I hadn't seen before, but also a lot of like bigger name hand dyers. And then they also had a lot of fabric. So if you are into sewing as well, they had a great selection, totally off topic, but we were in the Sakakura area and they had so much fabric. Like I would say there was like 10 stores just in one long area where you could just walk and shop. And honestly, I was so tempted, but I could not do that to myself because we were only really budgeting for the yarn and I didn't have anything in mind. So I would be randomly buying like two meters and then being like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. And that seemed wasteful and kind of silly. I think if I had time and maybe wasn't so packed with seeing all the monuments, I would have loved to have gone to a third yarn store. Um, I saw some good reviews of this place called Le Tr Tricoteur 
Volant. I don't know. Sorry again with the pronunciation. Sorry, really good reviews. And it looks like the selection is really cool from what I'm seeing on Google Maps and has a pretty high rating. So, but again, I was like, trying my best to like hit like the Eiffel Tower, Sakakur, the Pantheon, the Notre Dame, the Louvre. We, we, we ended up going to uh, the Musée de l'Orangerie and um, the uh, Musée d'Orsay. We were jam-packed in the couple days that we were in Paris. So that's all of Paris, but we did end up going to Lyon because it was a kind of like a stop before we headed to Italy. In Lyon, I feel like there are actually a lot of yarn stores there. So not gonna lie, I feel like if I lived in Paris or anywhere in France, I would totally make like a day trip out to go and see them because it's quite a lot and they're in a like close vicinity to each other. The first one I went to was called the, that was called Mercerie Cour. I don't know. It's kind of a more of a fabric store, I would say. In the back section, they have a lot of yarns. Uh, I ended up just going to this yarn store because it was really close to our hostel uh, and like literally like a walk away. So I was like, you know what, why not? Let's go see it. It has quite a small section in the back, but it's a ton of Fonty. Again, I wish I knew more about Fonty. I, I feel like I probably should have looked up more into French specific yarns. I shouldn't be basing all my opinions on what other people are. I should definitely just go go out and like buy anything that I feel like looks nice to me. But again, I don't know how I feel about falling in love with yarns that I can't access because then that's like extremely devastating and like not being able to get it and only being able to get it in France, I I don't know how I would survive. So yeah, if you know about Fonty and you are on a lookout, definitely go check out this place. Next place I went to was called Trico de Lyon. Uh, it's kind of I want to say in the main kind of shopping area, there's like a ton of stores kind of between like one street and two streets kind of thing. And then they intercross and there's like a ton of shops around there. This one was kind of like on, like you turn right and then all of a sudden there's like a yarn store in what looks like an alleyway. So it was very confusing. This place is huge. Like honestly, one of the bigger yarn stores that I've seen and it has a lot of selection to it. Like Honestly, like the most Issager I've ever seen in my entire life. I think they had a bunch of like Ito as well. Yeah, like honestly, like very overwhelming. Like don't even know where to start when you're looking in this place. It has both like a front store and then a back section. So you really do have to take your time when you're looking at it. But she has a lot of like quantity and a lot of color. So I definitely would recommend this place. Like I got some Issager, I got some Issager Trio and Linen. And I feel like that was that is like sold out almost like everywhere I go. And then the last place I ended up going to was Pom Pom Girl. Cause I was asking everybody in my uh, Instagram stories, like what are some yarn stores in Leon? And oh my God, everyone is so helpful and so nice to me. Um, Yeah, so, so everyone was suggesting that place and then um, Pom Pom Girl. So I was able to go to Pom Pom Girl. It's so cute in there. Like honestly, the lady was really cute. I liked her a lot shout out to you girl and lots of hanks quite like a small and narrow store but lots of hanks lots of like i think they had some knitting for olive which i was like should i buy it they have some long kava long kava which is like this finished yarn that i cannot find anywhere and you can like use it to knit a lot of the uh, crochet crush book in it they were honestly like too big to put into my luggage but if you have room i say why not uh, if you're looking out for sheeps I don't know how you say that. It has a J in there, which makes me confused. Uh, I've never tried that yarn before, or I've also never tried Rosario's for Some Crump Casol wool, which I have also been kind of eyeing and thinking about getting, but I have no idea where to buy it. Yeah, and again, more Fonty. I think Fonty is like really the way to go for French for French yarn. So weirdly enough, I was able to hit up three yarn stores when I went to Lyon, and I feel like that's already way more than anyone really needs to in a day trip. You girl went for a day and we were able to see that many. Uh, that's the end of the video. I hope that gave you some inspiration or ideas of what to do if you ever go to Paris or Lyon and you wanna do some cute little like yarn shopping in between. Stream on YouTube, we're on Patreon, I have a Discord, I'm on Instagram, you catch me every, anywhere. And I guess Ravelry, I never really say I'm on Ravelry, but I am there as well.
But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, push the notification bell if you want to be notified when I post next. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!